Hi guys. Um, so welcome to the webinar. I can give a, a quick introduction to myself. My name is uh, Per Bur. I'm the CTO of Varnish Software. And um, the topic for today's talk is uh, webinar is uh, cache invalidation. So let's see if I can find my slides. Yes. So on cache invalidation uh, strat strategies. So uh, Phil Carlton said that there are two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and uh, naming things. So today we'll talk about uh, cache invalidation. So a uh, quick introduction to Varnish Cache. So it's a web app accelerator or HTTP reverse proxy. It's known to be very fast and it's very flexible. So we sort of liken it to a rotational press that sort of revolutionized printing when it came because it was able to, to churn out, uh, instead of uh, one print every 10 seconds, it, uh, with a rotational press you could uh, turn out something like 10, 20 or 30 copies per second. It basically made possible to create newspapers in, in any scale. And sort of, sort of, that's sort of the role of, of what Varnish Cache does to your stack is is to be that sort of uh, distribution point where your application servers create the content, Varnish Cache sort of stores the content, and then services it up really quickly. Uh, typical speed ups when you're looking at an application like Drupal, and um, when it sort of spits out a page, it might use something like uh, 60 milliseconds to do that, whereas sort of Varnish will spend maybe 60 microseconds to sort of deliver that page from cache. And that's a speed up of approximately a thousand times. Of course, that might vary, and there are other things that sort of come into play as well, but it's sort of the idea is basically the same. Uh, your web application server makes content, Varnish sort of just pushes it out. Uh, a bit about Varnish software, the company behind Varnish Cash. Uh, our business model is subscription based, so we sell subscriptions, we offer software that sort of goes along with Varnish Cash, 20% uh, support and some professional services. So we do things like uh, develop specific features for Varnish, uh, modules, integration, etc. So the goal today basically it's to run an how to run an efficient website with Varnish Cache. Now there's a reason why we want to do cache invalidation and the primary reason is basically to allow for longer TTLs. Uh, TTL stands for time to live and it's basically how long Varnish can sort of keep an object stored. So the longer Varnish can keep things in memory the higher the, the, the cache hit ratio uh, becomes. And since also Varnish will deliver the cache hits much faster than the cache misses, the higher the cache hit ratio, the better the user experience will be. And of course, the better the user experience, the more money you make, and the more loyal your readership will be. Uh, and in addition, also the backend usage will be lowered, so you'll have uh, less need for servers producing the content on the backend. The sort of other reason to do cache invalidation is to get instantaneous updates when content changes. So this is especially true for, for online media where sort of breaking a story uh, used to be about uh, hours, it's now about uh, seconds and minutes. So actually having that story breach the front page in, uh, instantaneously, the moment it published, you need to sort of make sure that all the caches on the way get get invalidated. Now, if the sort of cache could invalidate itself, that would be great. Uh, unfortunately, it probably won't because it's uh, so we need some sort of of, of integration between uh, varnish and 
the back end that sort of controls the content. And, and there are multiple ways of, of doing that integration, and that's basically what we're going to talk about. So there are several components in Varnish that can sort of invalidate content. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you a, a listing of the, of the components we'll cover. So the first one is purge. There's something called bans. There's a soft purge and a soft ban, and there are smart bans. And then there's ban and purge distribution. Uh, and there's hash ninja. So I'll start with HTTP purge, which is basically the the oldest way to sort of invalidate uh, HTTP reverse proxy. So HTTP purge with purge is, is what we call the HTTP verb or an action. Um, it takes the URL as a parameter and it purges sort of all variants of that page. Varnish had this support, basically it was originally designed to be a drop-in replacement for Squid back in 2005 and 2006. And sort of Squid supported HTTP purge and basically that's why Varnish started out with, with supporting HTTP purge as well. Um, it looks something like this, where you sort of connect to Varnish on port 80, and then you use purge slash foo, and you specify the protocol, and you specify the host, and that's basically the whole HTTP request. And then Varnish will sort of accept that request, and it will hopefully do the purge if it is configured to do so. Now, sort of Varnish doesn't support HTTP purge out of the box, uh, so it needs some uh, some sort of configuration to be in place. Now, uh, this is basically the configuration it needs. I'll, uh, uh, I can go through it. So the first part is basically uh, an ACL where where we define who what IP ranges are allowed to to do purges. It's rather simple, and then we sort of start hooking the HTTP verb into the configuration. Now, uh, so we do check if the rec object, if the uh, rec request equals purge. If it is, then it's a purge request. Then we check if the client IP is outside of the uh, purge ACL. And if it is, then we throw an error and we basically kill the, uh, kill the, the request there. If it's not, then we ask Varnish to sort of pass this uh, pass this request on uh, through its uh, state machine. So basically that return lookup, it, it will throw the request either to VCL hit if it's a his, hit, if it's a, if it's a hit, or to miss if it's a cache miss. Now sort of, if it's a cache hit, then it's easy. We basically do a check again if the request is purged. Um, because there's not really that much state coming in from VCL receive. So all requests will actually hit VCL hit. So we need to check if, if it's still a, uh, a purge. Uh, and if it is, then we call the VCL function purge. And after we've done that, we, we throw an error, and then we throw error 200, which basically means OK, uh, and with the text purged. So if you don't throw that error, the actually, I think the original content will be uh, delivered. Uh, so the actual object that you purge, no, that, that actually won't happen because that, that has just been purged. I think it will, I'm not actually sure what will, <laughs> what will happen then. But I mean, what, what you want to do is basically throw the um, server up the error message uh, or the, the OK message. Uh, so that you, you finalize the, the request there. Uh, the alternative is is to do, uh, if, if Varnish can't find the object in its cache, it will call VCL miss. Uh, so we do the same thing there. And the reason we do the same thing there, because this is not really intuitive, is that there might be multiple variants of an object on the same URL. HTTP has something called vary, which is a response header. So, for instance, the 
backend can tell Varnish to keep different variants for different user agents. So, for instance, for you have one for for uh, desktops and one for for uh, smartphones. And since we didn't send a user agent string, we might get one, one variant that has no user agent string attached to it. But there might be other variants that require a specific user agent. And that's why you need to sort of purge in VCL miss as well in order to sort of make sure that, that all variants of, of, uh, of that object are purged. Um, I think in Varnish 2.1 lingo, this was called Nuke. And in order to do it, you would have to do embed the C code into Varnish, which was pretty horrible. So summing up, HTTP purge, it's really fast. It's also very efficient. Um, basically, it's, it's, uh, there's very few limits on how many HTTP purges you can do a second. I mean, it's mostly about uh, memory speed or, or virtual memory speed. So if your memory is partially on disk, that might slow you down a bit. But yeah, uh, modern servers shouldn't have any problems doing tens, 10 or 50,000 uh, purges per second. So the only sort of weak point here is that you need to know the exact URL of the object that you're going to purge. And it knows nothing about sort of relationship between pages or or it's really quite uh, quite dumb. Yeah, and last thing, it doesn't know about Grace. So I'll return to if you're sort of confused with regards to Grace, uh, just uh, hang on and and we'll get to that uh, uh, in a couple of minutes. So our next topic is uh, the bands. Now bands, um, they are basically a mechanism that were was they were introduced in Varnish 2.1, and you're allowed to sort of, of, of invalidate content based on on any any parameter, basically any sort of uh, property on on the objects or the requests that come in. You can use them to invalidate content. Uh, it's really really fast. It's sort of uh, very very flexible. You can sort of match almost any pattern, you can say like uh, do request now ban, bans like uh, invalidate all PNG files or all PDF files that are bigger than one megabyte or yeah, any sort of combination of, of, uh, of properties from, from taken from the HTTP headers in either the request or the response. Um, you do this through regular expressions. So in order to sort of do this properly, you need to master regular expressions. And you do this on the regular expression obj or rec. Now rec is the request, obj is the object that you deliver. So, or the response actually. Um, it's not really efficient. So it sort of, it does have to do quite a bit of work in order to, do, to execute a ban. Um, I sort of, I'll come back to that, but it's sort of actually quite funny because it's both fast and not efficient. But um, yeah, in five minutes you'll see what I mean. And also bands, they don't know anything about grace. So in order to sort of execute bands, you can execute bands on the CLI, on the command line on uh, that Varnish has internally. You connect to the, connect to the admin port on the Varnish server and you do a ban and you basically come up with a request expression. Here the expression is, I want to ban anything that has a request matched to it that where rec HTTP host is example.com and rec URL matches PNG and then end of string. So basically clear all the PNGs out of example.com. You can also do it through HTTP, just as we did with purges. So, yeah, in this here, I do ban slash foo and specify the, the protocol and then specify the host. Now, ban over HTTP, there is no default configuration for that. So you have to set, 
sort of enable that yourself and it will typically look something like this. It's actually a bit shorter than the purge configuration. Uh, but basically, we plug it into VCL receive and we check is the request a ban and then is the client IP outside of the ACL called purge and if so, we throw an error. If not, then we keep executing and we'll execute a ban, uh, the VCL command ban, and where we sort of build up the expression that we give to it. So we specify rec HTTP host and rec URL, and we give that, uh, throw that into the ban function. And then we throw an uh, error page with 200 OK and the text ban added. And then again, uh, this this so actually it won't actually go and hit the back end. Now, we can sort of go into a bit more on how bands actually work. So when you share a band like that, just like I did in the, on the last slide, it goes on a list. Uh, so we keep the bands on the list, but also a sorted list where the sort of oldest bands are, are on the bottom of the list. Uh, and in a one server, you have a certain number of objects in cache. So if you take like one, one of these bands, uh, we say that at, this band is created at time t0. Uh, then that band actually only applies to objects uh, that are older than t0. Because, I mean, if the object arrives after the band, obviously, the ban won't apply to it because I mean, you ban all, all, you ban slash foo, and then five minutes later, another object for slash foo comes in. Obviously, that ban shouldn't be applied to the new object. So, a ban applies only to a certain object. And then, as that object then is sort of, uh, that object is then sort of kept as a candidate for that ban. So, when you ask sort of Varnish to deliver one of those objects, it will actually see if there are any bands that potentially apply. And each object is then matched once against each band. And if the man band matches, then the object is killed and thrown off cache and it generates a cache mess. So that's basically how it works. And so now you see the sort of somewhat inefficient system here is that because you have, to, when you issue a ban, you have to match that ban potentially against uh, quite a few objects in your cache. So if you have like a million objects in cache and you issue a ban, that ban has to be in some way evaluated for every object in cache. Now, computers are extremely fast, so not necessarily a big problem, it's just something to be aware of. Um, there's also something called the band lurker, which is a worker thread. Um, I think it was introduced at some point during the 2.1 series, 2.1.3 maybe. Um, so it's a worker thread that sort of uh, uh, just usually just idles. Uh, and what it does, it just picks off bands of the, from the bottom of the list and then tries to match them against each uh, object. Now, and then if that band is matched against all the objects in Varnish, then that band is removed, which means that as, uh, and that means that the band list is then kept shorter, which means that there are fewer bands that potentially needs to be matched for incoming requests. Yeah, so we basically try to sort of, uh, to, to avoid doing work at the delivery time uh, by having the worky thread do that work in the background. Now, for obvious reasons, this only works for bands that, that do ban on obj, um, because the band worker doesn't actually have a request present. So, typically in a band you might use rec URL, but when the band lurker evaluates a band, it doesn't have a request. So it can only evaluate bands that don't touch 
uh, the rec object. Yeah, and it kills a ban. Yeah, when all the match uh, when it, uh, when it's matched against all the object older than uh, T zero. So there's something called or a, a term uh, coined uh, smart bands, which are basically bands that are ban lurker friendly. And there are a couple of rules. So basically, you just avoid banning on rec. Um, you do that by sort of, if you need, however, information that is typically in rec, so rec URL being an obvious uh, uh, thing you might want to ban on, or and or rec.http.host. So you copy those bits from rec to be resp in VCL fetch. And then you can issue the ban on ob dot um, http x url or ob ob dot x http or ob dot http dot x host, for instance. If you copy those bits over uh, to be resp in VCL fetch, they'll be available in obj later as the object is stored. Also, when sort of doing bans at scale. Keep an eye on the ban list, and uh, uh, there's a counter in Varnish, regular expressions per second. Uh, so we've seen that that can sometimes get quite high. I would say on a modern server, it should at least be capable of doing typically evaluating like a million bands per second. Uh, so yeah, you might want to sort of start paying attention to it if you see that it. It is uh, the average is above 100,000. If it is, then you might want to sort of do something or yeah, prepare pre prepare for uh, for a potential uh, limitation. Um, if you sort of run into problems with bands, sort of starting to sort of drag the server down, um, you have the option of basically trimming the cache. So shortening the TTL of the of the objects that are stored in cache, that means that there are fewer that will be fewer objects to uh, to fewer bands, a few objects to evaluate all the bands against. So typically, I mean, the number of CPU cycles you need to spend on bands is the sum of uh, the number of bands and the number of objects in cache. So if you reduce either the number of, of bands or the number of objects in cache, you'll spend less time executing the bands. So um, there's something called grace in Monish. Uh, I think introduced in the 2.0 series. Uh, it was actually introduced as a sort of way to sort of mitigate the thread pileups. Um, basically, what it does is that it allows Varnish to sort of serve content that is out, uh, that's stale. So, if the original content for some reason is unavailable. So, originally it was only used to, you would only use it to serve stale content when the object was busy. So, let's say that you have a really, really heavy page, slash foo or something. And then users start hitting slash foo, and then it expires suddenly from cache or gets invalidated. And then a user requests it, and then another user requests it, and then another user requests it, and then suddenly you have like a thousand users waiting for that same object. And that's obviously bad for uh, multiple reasons. One of them is that you could potentially at some point run into a thundering herd problem as that object sort of gets back from the back end and then Varnish suddenly needs to deliver that object to thousands of users. Now that problem is more or less solved by uh, in the sort of uh, iterative development that we've been doing for the last four years. But it's also sort of a, a bad user experience and you might sort of want to allow Varnish to serve an older version of slash foo while the new one is being fetched. So the first user will go and the request will go to the back end and the back end starts working on creating slash foo again. In the meantime, Varnish will sort of hand off the old version uh, 
to the to the people that are waiting. Another use for Grace would be that that you have slash foo in memory, and then suddenly a backend goes down, and then you basically uh, so what you want to do you you some people might consider serving up an error page. But since we actually have an old version of slash foo in the cache, you might want to sort of consider serving that one instead. And this is basically what, what Grace allows, allows you to do, is, is to actually serve that old uh, variant, that old version of the page, uh, because the backend is now gone. Now, that function, for some users, that functionality is extremely valuable either because they don't want to sort of ever serve up error pages or because they have an unstable backend. Uh, so cache invalidation becomes difficult then because the moment you sort of do a purge on an object, it's killed, it's gone, it's like there's nothing left. So if that backend should go down immediately following the purge, you'll basically have no slash foo in cache at all. And you have no candidates for race. Um, so that's basically why we want to sort of do uh, graceful cache invalidation. I just described the, the problem. So what we were basically trying to achieve is, is to, to, to keep a, a purge an object in such a way that a candidate for grace remains. There's a vmod that does exactly that. Um, what it does is instead of actually like purging them and killing them, it, it basically just sort of marks them as a, as a stale. So one should then sort of prefer not to serve them, but it might uh, still sort of keep them around for uh, for um, uh, as candidates for grace. Yeah, and that's the link to the. Uh, to the vmod, it's uh, yeah, it should be fairly self-explanatory uh, uh, um, how how to uh, get it to work. So it basically extends the, the VCL language a bit, and you get a soft purge uh, module. So that's soft purge dot purge, I think, uh, which yeah, you then use instead of doing purge. Um, Earlier I've been talking about purges and I've been talking about bans. And since I'm talking about graceful purges, there's also graceful bans. Uh, basically the, the same thing as, yeah, almost the same thing as graceful purges. Um, they allow you to write complex expressions that instead of running around killing objects, they mark them as stale and so they retain as candidates for uh, grace. Uh, it's not in currently in the main line of Varnish. It requires a patch. So um, if you Google it, you'll find the patch. You can probably apply it to plain vanilla Varnish itself. Those of you who have a Varnish software subscription, uh, it's available in our enhanced build of Varnish. Yeah, that's basically um, graceful bands. So now we moved sort of over to um, more, yeah, a few more advanced topics. First is sort of distribution of invalidation events. Now, if you have a sort of a, a large-ish varnish setup, you don't want every web app to know about every varnish server. Basically, want to distribute the uh, dis distribute invalidation events from a single point, so you can sort of uh, hook your applications into that one API endpoint and not have them, so they don't have to know about the current varnish configuration or how many varnish servers there are now and who of them are up and who are down. Uh, so in a typical Varnish setup, it might be something like this, where you have three clusters behind four Varnish servers. Uh, basically, what you want to do is set up some sort of admin node that has access to all the Varnish servers, and 
then you want to have the various application servers sending the purges to one place. Now, I've written like a really, really simple invalidation distributor that you sort of uh, might actually be able to, to use. It's a very simple shell script. Uh, I, I can go through it really quickly. So the first thing we do is basically start listening on, on a port. It listens on port 2000. Now we do a while loop. Now we read a string, a line into the variable, variable URL. And then we do a for loop where we iterate over all our current running servers, alpha, beta, and gamma. And we then call curl. Min minus M2 means a two second timeout. So in case beta or gamma or alpha is down, we don't stick around forever waiting for it, for it to succeed. Um, minus X basically means use this as a proxy. So what it does is basically just tells curl to use this as a proxy. So curl will, no matter what the URL, it will connect to the server as specified. So in the for loop, it will, at the first iteration, connect to alpha without sort of looking at the URL. And then the minus big X is replace the HTTP verb with purge. So instead of uh, doing a normal get request, it will issue a purge request instead. And that's basically it. So don't sort of to use this, you only have to like connect to port 2000 and start spitting out URLs. And this thing will then uh, distribute those uh, to alpha, beta, and gamma. I can sort of also mention that, that those of you with a subscription that use the admin console, the Varnish Administration Console, VAC, um, there's a purger built into that. So that's basically a fast API for event distribution. So you could sort of use it for, I think you could use it for anything, but, but uh, purging and banning could potentially be one of them. Uh, currently, I mean, it's what we've done is we've wrote a HTTP server from scratch, a very minimal, min minimalistic one that does only one thing. So I think currently, I think we tested it up to 40,000 requests per second. That's across data centers in the US with uh, one on the east side and one on the west side and one somewhere in Texas. Um, yeah. And then you have a, you do, you have a centralized uh, RESTful API and you'll do uh, something like this where you will do post against uh, API endpoint here, and then we send the ban expression as uh, the body to the post. And at uh, endpoint there, also specify which cluster it is that you want to talk to. So there are multiple ways of sort of uh, of uh, distributing um, these invalidation events. Now. There's one sort of thing I mentioned earlier that I said I would come back to, and that's sort of invalidation based on content relationship. Uh, so let's say that you have a web page with content from eight different objects. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you in a, a minute what I mean. Our one of these objects is updated, and then the basic problem is which page to purge. Now, this is a screenshot from Best Buy. I think it's some sort of tablet or something. Um, and the moment you update the price on the tablet, you need to update that URL. That's pretty easy. That's well understood. The problem is, is the sort of related products. Or for a newspaper site, it might be similar stories or stories taken from the same section or some other sort of loosely uh, loosely related data to the object that you're displaying. I mean, that's part of sort of keeping the reader interested is to give them vaguely related objects, uh, vaguely related data to the data that they're looking at. So with related objects here, 
you display some information and when that information then is updated you need to sort of purge this page as well so for instance let's say that the Samsung refurbished Galaxy Tab 210.1 <laughs> gets a new price then you would obviously need to sort of clear this page out of cache as well uh, or you will end up serving up the wrong price now I know that actually uh, I've talked to, to people doing e-commerce that because they weren't able to do this they decided on actually uh, just not updating the price during the day uh, and then just sort of purging the whole cache during night and then only updating prices at, uh, uh, at night uh, and that's horribly uh, I think that's horribly uh, slow to not be able to sort of update the prices uh, during the day so this is a a proposed way of sort of solving that problem in, in Varnish. Now, if you sort of add an X key header to the response as it comes from the back end, now that, and then you sort of start listing up unique IDs for each object. Now, the, the, for those of you who do e commerce and know what the SQ is, you could probably use the SQ, which is the unique ID of the, of the object, of the thing that you're selling or article ID from CMS or some other way of, of uniquely identifying that object. Um, and so on a typical web page you might have like three or four or five or ten or fifteen of these that uniquely identify them. Um, and then you sort of use that ID to do cache invalidation. So ev that every page that sort of mentioned that ID will be invalidated. So you could do this with bands and sort of let's say that dollar ID is the is the the unique ID of the object that we want to do uh, to invalidate. So this is a band where we basically yeah put it in, into the CLI and it will then uh, kill off every everything that uh, that references dollar time ID or replace dollar ID with, the, with whatever uh, the only sort of problem with this approach would be that that you would maybe run into the same problems that you do when you do so ban that scale I mean if you have 10,000, 15,000, 50,000 objects in your cache uh, and you do updates maybe once every 10 seconds, this is not a problem probably um, because then the sort of overall volume will be low enough that the band lurker will be able to keep the band list really neat and short. So if you sort of start putting a lot of load in this, CPU might uh, usage might increase and if you're sort of trying to do this at, at high scale uh, I would recommend that you check out uh, Dara, Hash Ninja. <laughs> now, Hash Ninja is uh, what it does is actually maintains a, a hash of keys and pages so uh, the, the unique ideas which I mentioned earlier and the URL that they mentioned on, those are stored in a central hash in, inside a BMOD in Varnish. It's a many to many relationship. So then you'll be able to, uh, every page that sort of mentions object one, two, three, then gets, can get uh, invalidated. Over it is very low. The only thing that it needs to do is this store this one hash. Uh, performance is there's negligible performance impact uh, yeah it's uh, actually available today it requires a subscription and there's a bmod and it requires you to run the sort of enhanced version of varnish uh, because it requires a few callbacks that aren't in vanilla varnish yet uh, yeah it's uh, I would say it's very well suited for e-commerce and digital media So, summing up, 
uh, purges, which is sort of the, the workhorse of, of web cache invalidation. Um, bands are extremely powerful and flexible tool to do cache invalidation. Uh, I would recommend sort of everyone to sort of use bands, <laughs> except that when you sort of start doing it autom doing it automatically, often isn't necessarily always a good idea if you have a big website. But if you have either have a small website or uh, not a huge amount of content, then it's fine. So, for instance, on varnishcache.org or varnishsoftware.com, uh, we use bands to sort of invalidate content because that's the default varnish module for Drupal. That's what it does. Um, soft purges and bands are great concepts if you sort of worry that your backend might disappear right after you have uh, invalidated some content. Smart bands are the sort of way to sort of write way more scalable bands. Yeah, hash ninja and content tagging for sort of telling Manish a bit about the relationship between the various objects in cache so it will know what to invalidate. And uh, that's my final slide. Uh, I heard there's a question. Let's see if I can. Uh... Oh. So the question is from from uh, Joel, and if ESI can be purged with the purge request, if an ESI part, we have multiple ESIs on one page, and we want to have ESI with one the cache, I want to purge only the ESI part. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, you could purge. Um, the purger part of Varnish doesn't know if it's ESI or or. Uh, how that content is 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 uh, is displayed. I mean, it doesn't know about that part at all. So you can just do that. Uh, let's see. There's another question here. Where does rec hash always miss equals true fit in? Um, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, it's been a while since I've uh, looked at it, but typically it's used to sort of bypass. We've used it to sort of bypass the. That means that internal hashing varnish will only. It will never mark an object as busy. Um, and so it has this really weird use case where you basically have two varnish servers and uh, you want to fetch content through the other um, and I, 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 no, I, I, I would say that it doesn't actually fit in here at all <laughs> um, those are really weird use cases for rec hash always miss um, I'm up that's the best I can do uh, at this point. Uh, next question from Chris Maji. Can we get a little more information on where the varnish patch is for soft bands as well? I looked for it during the presentation and I didn't find it. Um, I think it was posted to the dev list like six months ago or something, uh, or maybe a year. I found it earlier today when I Googled it. Uh, so it's uh, it also I mean there there are two parts of it. There's the uh, soft band vmod which I think should be on GitHub, and then there's the patch which basically uh, which was posted to uh, to uh, to Varnish Dev. Next question from Rodrigo uh, regarding soft bands. Would it be possible to serve the request in grace period if the response from backend 
was a HTTP 500 or HTTP 3.0, uh, 300 something. Um, yes, I think that should be possible. Uh, so basically, in that's what you're talking about now is basically saint mode, uh, which I didn't discuss today. So what you do then is basically mark the current object as invalid and then do a restart on the transaction in VCL fetch. Um, it's not directly tied with, with soft bands, but it would it should actually work the same way. So uh, so if you use soft bands, you'll have the greatest objects available and then you use uh, uh, saint mode to mark objects as currently invalid from a certain server and then varnish would serve the stale versions instead if it has no candidates, no backend candidates that are alive. And a question from Joe Payton, a uh, question about backend health, can I use grace when the backend is in maintenance mode? Drupal, Drupal. It's not offline, but it, it returning a page that essentially means it's offline. Yes. Uh, so actually, Joe, uh, Joy, sorry. Uh, uh, that's this. That's basically Saint mode as well. So Saint mode is basically looking at the object in VCL fetch and marking it as down and asking Varnish to use graced objects instead. So I'm not entirely sure how Drupal communicates that it's in maintenance mode, but I would guess that it might be a header or a HTTP return uh, stat status code. Uh, yeah. But you should be able to sort of find it and then sort of read up on saint mode and um, you should be fine. And I think that's uh, basically all our questions. If they're not, I may be something in. No, no questions in the chat. Great. Okay, guys, I think that's uh, basically it. We'll be publishing this. You'll get a link to uh, a downloadable version and some uh, slides, maybe. See you guys. Cheers.